Activities. Biba. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adahi Tanu Program, gold sponsors of the Guam Micronesia Island Fair. Cars Plus remind you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And steaks, ribs, seafood, and our famous fresh garden bar. Ruby Tuesday, good times you can taste. Right now on Primetime, she's been the person in charge of ensuring Guam's artifacts and remains are preserved. Chris Barnett has more on the recent termination of Linda Uggen. Plus, members of the 35th legislature speak with the Office of Insular Affairs via video conference to push the bill to pay war claims. And a big telecom company owes $5.7 million in back rent to the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. Hafade and good evening, everyone. At the height of construction for the military buildup, the person in charge of ensuring Guam's ancient artifacts and remains are preserved, researched, and investigated has been fired. Chris Barnett reports. It's in my email. For almost 20 years, Linda Ogan has been serving as Guam's state historic preservation officer, but on Tuesday, her boss, Department of Parks and Rec Director Richard Abanez, fired her. It really smells of retaliation. Ogan, represented by Guam Federation of Teachers Robert Koss, he believes she was fired because of a grievance she filed in April related to one of her employees that was detailed to the director's office. Ogan argued proper protocol was not followed and that moving her employee is hampered and will continue to hamper the division in carrying out its mandated function. She also called the move unreasonable and a total disregard of the division's mandates. Ibanez, in response, issued a notice of proposed adverse action alleging official misconduct because Ugan used a government vehicle to file the grievance. He also alleges she made false statements during a meeting in May for an investigatory review with the Attorney General's office. During that meeting, Koss denied access, and he says that means Ugan was denied her due process. On June 4th, the notice of proposed adverse action was filed, but two weeks later it became final, and on Tuesday, Ogan was terminated. According to Koss, an appeal will be filed with the Civil Service Commission. The fact that he based it on the grievance, that there's no prior discipline, uh, I would fully expect the Civil Service Commission to, turn it up, to overturn this thing on a motion uh, without even going to the hearing on the merits. Ogden in recent weeks making headlines for being critical of the military's handling of ancient artifacts discovered on construction sites at Magua and the live fire training range in Machinao. Could her termination be more than just because of her grievance? We discussed that. Uh, we're not aware of, you know, whether or not the director uh, has any sort of relationship with the military, uh, you know, and that... Uh, or, or other construction projects that she might be impeding. Um, you know, we don't, we don't have that information, and, and I doubt, you know, they will tell us that. According to Governor's Communications Director Janela Carrera, the governor was not aware that the SHPO would be served with a notice of final adverse action, quote, at the time it occurred. She is aware of it now. Carrera says Ibanez will serve as the acting SHPO until the governor can appoint a new one. Guam law mandates that the SHPO must have training, work experience, and education pertinent to cultural resource management. Although he'll only be serving in an acting capacity, Abanas has more than 20 years of managerial experience in sales and marketing, technology, golf course management, and in the beverage industry. He's also a former Guam national volleyball player. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. It was only three months ago Governor Lulian Guerrero reconfirmed with the federal government Linda Uggins as Guam State Historic Preservation Officer. The governor wrote, my reconfirmation is a testament to her ability to continue Guam's preservation efforts. Meanwhile, Historic Preservation and Land Committee Chair Senator Therese Terlahi said she's troubled by the administration's move in the midst of military construction projects, including the bulldozing of 5,000 acres of limestone forest and numerous historic sites. Terlahi saying the SHPO, in her official capacity, had to witness and carry the burden of representing Guam and the Chamorro people in the face of 10 years of the largest buildup in the history of peace. She says she had high hopes this new administration will help shore up the legal or other expert resources that office needs to truly represent Guam. 
A move like this, she says, leaves Guam vulnerable to further bulldozing of historic sites and leaves Guam voiceless during a critical period of potential harm to our culture and our environment. Silencing and intimidation are the opposite of standing up for the people of Guam. The rush is still on to pass a local bill to pay war claims to surviving Manamco in time for the 75th liberation anniversary. Speaker Tina Munya Barnes and several other senators held a conference call with Interior Department officials today to keep them posted on the efforts. The speaker says she briefed the Office of Insular Affairs on the legislature and the governor's intent to push through a bill to pay survivors out of local funds. As of this morning's conversation uh, with the folks in D.C., I'm, I'm, I'm uh, happy that, that we are continuing this dialogue and this relationship. Barnes has also written to congressional leaders in support of Congressman Michael San Nicholas's bill. The measure corrects technical flaws in the law passed by former delegate Madeleine Bordaglio that prevent the Treasury Department from releasing the war claims money. A markup hearing is scheduled for tomorrow in Washington. From the legislative perspective, from the administration's perspective, from the congressman's perspective, from even the liaison's perspective, we need to go at this at all angles. The money to pay war claims comes from a percent set aside of so-called Section 30 funds. That's money Gov Guam gets back every year from federal employee taxes. St. Nicholas had cautioned that the local payments could have unintended consequences, such as double checks or wouldn't be reimbursed from the set-aside funds. But Barnes is undeterred. They know that this bill exists and they know that our concerted efforts are working together and making sure that the administrative uh, provisions that are needed to work with this bill in concert so that we can have a solid bill moving over forward to make this work for our sinus, this is the right way to go. Barnes showed us a draft bill but declined to release it. Once it's finalized, a special session is expected to be called to act on the measure. And not to be left out, local Republicans also weighed in on the war claims issue by signaling their support for Congressman St. Nicholas's bill. The five GOP senators signed off on a letter to Congressman Rob Bishop, the ranking member of the House Committee on Natural Resources, which will hear the measure tomorrow in D.C. Making the announcement were GOP Chairman Jerry Chrysostomo and Minority Leader Senator Will Castro. Together with the Republican Caucus uh, here at the legislature and the Republican Party of Guam, we are supporting a um, unanimous consent call. Uh, and uh, to get this H.R. 1365 moving uh, out of the House. I'm speaking for myself, but any time you have the opportunity to bring closure to war reparations, that's something I can stand behind. But the Republican Party uh, is here to say basically that we've been united since day one, uh, thanks to the National Committee man and establishing that dialogue with members of the House. And so the chairman's taking the initiative to pull us all together, and so we stand united as a party. The unanimous consent call the local party is asking from congressional Republicans would be to set aside procedures that would expedite the proceedings in the St. Nicholas Bill markup hearing. An emotional meeting of the Guam Education Board as a parent of a George Washington High School student asked the board to do something about the alleged misconduct and inappropriate relations a JROTC instructor had with students. The incident has been under investigation since last month. One, one day... My son came up and said, you know what, Dad? I go, what? He goes, a friend of mine hung himself. And he said, what's going on? He goes, you know, she's in a ROTC, okay? And what happened there, it troubles my son every day. Every Wednesday, they, uh, they get together and they practice. One day, uh, Major Q, came up to him and yelled at him, said, get out of here. You think that's right for an instructor to say to um, a cadet? I would like to ask the board. Yes, you know, if they could do something for this person, the predator, to, to be banned in every school for what he did. And it's, it's no good for our kids if somebody's still out there doing this uh, crime. And they have to pay for it. The JROTC, JROTC instructor was detailed to GDOE Central in Tizen. Additionally, the school's principal was temporarily reassigned. 
Guam Education Board Chairperson Mark Mendiola assured the parent that the superintendent will write him an official response. A homeowner got quite a scare early Wednesday morning. At around 3 o'clock, officers from the Tumon Precinct Command responded to a burglary in progress at Villa Isabana in Harmon. The victim saw a man inside his home. The suspect ran and fled toward Marine Corps Drive, and responding officers saw the homeowner and the suspect engaged in a fight. Police immediately intervened and were able to subdue the suspect, identified as 38-year-old Michael Libby Jr. He was arrested for burglary, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct. Alfred Jeffrey Chugan was arrested, accused of forcing his way into an apartment Monday and beating two people inside. One of the victims heard a banging on his front door. Chugan then forced himself into the home and began punching the victim until he fell to the ground. Court documents state Chugan then went into another room and began assaulting another man. One of the victims was able to escape to a nearby fire station for help. Chugan was charged with one count of home invasion, burglary, criminal mischief, and two counts of assault. And Mark Quintanilla was arrested, arrested on June 17th after he allegedly stole a pair of new shoes and ran out of a Tamuning store. According to court documents, security officers chased Quintanilla outside of a GPO where he jumped into a white vehicle. Police responding to the call noticed the car where a passenger was sweating profusely and throwing items into the back seat. Quintanilla was also wearing the shoes he allegedly stole. Police also spotted more than $500 worth of merchandise from another store with tags still on. According to court documents, the driver of the vehicle said he didn't know the suspect, who jumped into his car and had his hand in his waistband, inferring he had a weapon. Quintanilla was charged with one count of third-degree robbery, retail theft as a third-degree felony, and retail theft as a misdemeanor. He was arrested for several other cases spanning the last year. And stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained. Whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. What if you could drive your way to the most secluded beaches, energetic cities, or dramatic landscapes? Or eat your way to ancient civilizations, romantic hideaways, or the world's most hashtag destinations? Now you can. Earn double miles on gas and groceries with the all-new United Credit Card from First Hawaiian Bank and receive 30,000 bonus miles. Gas, groceries, getaway. Apply now at fhb.com united. The next generation Galaxy has arrived. See it and believe it. The Infinity O display is the most innovative Galaxy screen yet. Capture the wider world. Take stunning photos with a 123 degree field of vision. Use your phone to charge other wireless charging devices. Don't just stand out, stand apart. I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're gonna be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're gonna be here. We're your hometown carrier. And that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. 
That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. Welcome back. $5.7 million, that's how much telecom giant AT&T owes in back rent to the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission. The back rent for a property in Tangisan that was returned to ancestral lands from the Navy in 2002. The Guam Economic Development Authority is the property manager for ancestral lands properties. Larry Tovis of Gita tells KOM News an oversight allowed AT&T to keep occupying ancestral lands property without a lease since 2002. Gita sent a letter to AT&T regarding the millions owed in back rent, and Tova says while the company has not said it will pay up. We'll come to some form of agreement uh, as to whether they agree to our determination about the arrears, uh, the total amount of arrears we believe are owed to the commission. Um, I'm pretty sure they're still reviewing those, their documents to uh, confirm that. The property in question houses telecom submarine cables. Meanwhile, Ancestral Lands head John Ngoko says the infusion of the back rent would help his agency. Even Gita takes its 14.5% management fee off the top of the $5.7 million and that its AT&T agrees to pay the amount owed. Ngoko says the government of Guam is treading lightly in its dealings with the company. Ancestral Lands Commission has a jurisdiction over the property. We also don't want uh, uh, to create any undue uh, waves with at and They are a very big company. And yes, we do uh, need that, uh, that, that source of funding. Tovis and Ngoko say they've given at and until the end of the month to respond since the company rep told them most of the management is on vacation. Following three days in Vail, Colorado, to attend the Governor, Western Governors Association's annual meeting, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero traveled to San Francisco, California, with members of her fiscal discipline team for a bond presentation. Joining the Magat Haga were Bureau of Budget Management and Research Director Lester Carlson, Department of Administration Director Edward Byrne, Deputy Chief of Staff John Jr. Calvo, Guam Economic Development Authority Administrator Melanie Mendiola, her deputy Ricky Hernandez, and Public Finance Manager Christina Garcia. They detailed a proposal before credit rating agencies Standard & Poor's and Moody's on the Guam Solid Waste Authority bond to finance the construction of a new cell at the Lazon Landfill. Local businessman Deepak Dewan is the latest nominee to the Guam Economic Development Authority Board. Appearing today for his confirmation hearing, he pledged to focus on two things to support local small business owners. I intend to bring a renewed interest in supporting our local small business community and to do the two things that are paramount, procurement reform and regulatory and permitting reform. Because if the system doesn't work for those who call Guam home, then it might not work for those who are off-island and want to invest to call Guam home. Also testifying was Jennifer Lizama, who told an emotional story of how Dewan, a stranger to her family, heard about the crushing medical costs of her newborn child and arranged a fundraiser to help them bring the baby home. Diagnosed with a congenital disorder. He's the reason we're home and with our family. Your kindness and generosity is immensely appreciated. Baby Zion is a living testament that miracles do happen. And Mr. Deepak, you and the Delta family are proof that we still have amazing people in this world. Gita nominee Dewan is the owner of Delta Tire and Lube and Dewan Worldwide. The Guam Department of Education welcomes 16 high school juniors to their offices in Tizen today for their pilot summer program. Thomas Manglonia reports. Guam Department of Education Superintendent John Fernandez says although it's summer, it's time for these kids to get to work. With over 50 applicants on short notice, today, 16 high school students from seven of Guam's high schools were selected to intern at the DOE headquarters now through July 19. Give these young people, uh, incoming seniors, an opportunity to get some work experience, uh, to network with each other, and then to uh, kind of mentor them and give them some, also some service learning opportunities. The students received a $500 stipend, meet regularly with their cohort, and even complete several community service projects. 
Fernandez says he hopes to see more departments host summer programs for Guam's youth. But for sure we wanted to make sure that they were engaged and um, that they understood the high level of expectations which is to come dress professionally, be on time, be in regular communication with us should there be any disruption to your schedule. Uh, all the things that we would expect from our employees that are here day to day. Fernandez said you won't find these interns sitting around with nothing to do. Ultimately, he hopes they are inspired to be active members of the community. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglotnia. Four entities are the newest to take on the Guam Visitors Bureau Hafaday Pledge. 350 students from Wasigaku High School in Japan also joined the celebration at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse earlier today. UOG Professional and International Programs, English Adventure Camp and Sports Adventure Camp joined Wasigaku in signing the pledge. GVB uh, Vice President Bobby Alvarez says the event marks the best of cultural exchanges and embodies that Hafaday spirit. The word half a day is something that really touches my heart because it resembles love, friendship, respect, caring, generosity. It means so many things. Wasigaku High School students have visited Guam for 10 years. Their principal, Tatsuya Moria, says that he is overwhelmed by the half a day spirit. And today marks the 102nd year of brotherhood for the Young Men's League to mark its 102nd anniversary. Resolution 15835 was presented to Senators by Will Castro, Tello Taidegui, Therese Terlahi, Luis B. Munya, James Moylan, Tina Munya Barnes, and Jose Pito Terlahi at the League's general meeting. Senator Taidegui also attended in place of her father, who is the oldest living member of the League. The League, of course, is the oldest fraternal organization on the island. My father speaks so highly of this organization and he'll be there, you know, to the very end. Um, and I really thank you for encouraging the next generation to come in. And it's so important to keep this alive. And, uh, Senator Castro added that the League has a rich history founded on being change agents. Retirement Fund board elections are being held this Saturday at the Retirement Fund building in Mighty. From 10 to a.m. to 2 p.m., four elected positions will be voted on, two for the Active Retirement Board and two for the Retiree Board. There are four candidates running, two for each board. The Guam Election Commission oversees the election, and they tell KOM News in office voting for those who can't make Saturday's election will be conducted at the GEC offices on the second floor of the GCIC building in Haganya. In office voting hours are from 8 to 5 until Friday. Please bring a valid ID. Sports is next with Dave Delgado. Stay tuned. Every day a plus. When it comes to power and performance, nothing compares to Dodge. And right now at Cars Plus and Mighty, you can save thousands on many Dodge vehicles in stock during our Dodge Performance Days. Like a new 2019 Grand Caravan SE, save $42.50 or save $61.50 on a new Durango SXT. Looking for more power? Take home a new Charger SXT Plus today for only $37,689. Or save over seven grand on a new Challenger GT. Get more power and performance at Cars Plus and Mighty during Dodge Performance Days. Cars Plus, driven by you. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Ah, the Netherlands, home of the Strope Waffle McFlurry from McDonald's. A mix of delicious vanilla soft serve and caramel waffle cookie pieces. But to get one, you'd have to sneak out of the office, dig out your luggage, wait for boarding group 12, figure out what that means, take a train, take a boat, take a bike, and finally order one. Or get to your neighborhood McDonald's now, because for a limited time, worldwide favorites are here. Around the world is now around the corner. 
KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. In studio, Mattel team captain Jason Cunliffe. We're talking soccer. Uh, first off, 1-0 loss to Bhutan in Bhutan. Uh, How did you guys feel uh, in that game? Uh, you know, tough game on the road. They had uh, about 10,000 fans there bringing the, uh, the element and uh, throwing the elevation. It was, it was not the result we wanted, obviously. We had two good chances that we could have got on the board and, and flipped the uh, result for us, but it happened. So coming home, we knew it was big. We got to get a big win. Yeah, so playing in Bhutan, you said the temperature there was in the high 60s. Yeah. Uh, do you think it played somewhat of a factor for, for some of the guys playing in that conditions for the first time? Yeah, you know, I think obviously the elevation is about 8,000 feet um, factor in. bit cold, but honestly, that's probably ideal soccer, football weather. Um, I think just a little bit of preparation. We didn't get uh, any matches leading into it. We were supposed to have some friendlies in March, and it just didn't work out. So, you know, whenever we get together, we kind of have that one match. We got to knock the rust off, and I guess that was the match for us. Uh, but, you know, we played our game when we came home, and that was, that was the big thing for us. Yeah, so playing on the home soil, um, fans, the stadium didn't look this packed in the beginning, but uh, as the match went on, it, it filled up, and, and, you know, playing in front of that home crowd is definitely a good feeling. Yeah, 100%. Um, as you said, you know, that 315 kickoff Tuesday, I believe it was, you know, it's tough to get everyone's, everyone's working and whatnot, but, uh, but, yeah, even the fans that were there at the beginning brought the energy, and it's always good to play in front of your family and friends. And as hot as it was for us, we know it's going to be that much hotter for Bhutan. And guys uh, getting the call up to the Mattel for the first time. Uh, a bunch of young guys uh, contributing and helping out. Yeah, 100%. Um, there's Ethan Elwell, who didn't get off the bench, but it was his first full national team camp traveling with us. Uh, you got a guy like Devin Mendiola. Those two were both ball boys during our last World Cup qualifiers. Um, Kyle Halehale, great player, 16-year-old. Uh, you know, he's in the mix. Um, Isaiah Legutang, and then you also got uh, Marlon who, uh, Evans, who, who started both matches for us. So a bunch of young guys who before were on the outside looking in, kind of maybe one day hoping to play with us, and, and here they are now, not just playing, but contributing bigly. Well, we got the result we wanted, 5-0 win over Bhutan. Uh, hat trick for you. Um, you're, you're the most decorated men's national team player, I believe most caps. Uh, Talk about how you felt after that game with uh, the three uh, goals. Uh, you know, um, anytime you can contribute to the victory for the team, that's, that's a great feeling for it to be a hat trick in front of uh, you know, family and friends again. That's, that's an awesome feeling. My, my kids were out there. My sister flew in from uh, Vegas with my nephew, so to have them there was awesome. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's about the team. Um, and the result was you know, what we wanted. We wanted to guarantee ourselves. Uh, minimum eight more matches with these World Cup qualifiers, not just for us, obviously, but for, for the future of Guam football, for those youngsters out there again who potentially are the ball boys now, you know, and letting them see those matches in real time and, and in their face, they can understand, hey, you know, small place, small population, but we can battle with the best of them. We're waiting for the draw now, so uh, what is Mittal doing in the meantime? Uh, actually, we just picked up practice again, just gave ourselves about a week off. Um, had training this morning. We'll have training again tomorrow. Uh, our coach Carl is off in the States right now, meeting with some uh, players and seeing how everyone's doing there. And then, yeah, we're just right back into it. You know, it's a quick two month turnaround. Um, again, just hit the ground running and be prepared. Well, thanks for coming on the show. We'll keep you posted with Team Mattel. That's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this.
the phone you want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Check out Triple J's spectacular deal going on now during the hot summer savings event. Zero down and no payments for 90 days. Get into a Mazda CX-5 at its lowest price of $19,995 or $152 per paycheck. The big boy truck, the Ford F-150 starting at $282 per paycheck or the Honda Civic starting at only $176 per paycheck. Triple J says yes. Purchase your next vehicle online at TripleJGuam.com today. Triple J, customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Let's do some birthdays, everybody. Happy birthday to Liana Mae Jaylene from Dad, Mom, and Liancy. Happy birthday to you. Also, happy birthday number eight to Tayden Bloss. Love your sister and brothers. Happy Sweet 16 to Jasmine Cruz. Love Nayora, Neva, friends, and family. Also, Big Five. Happy fifth birthday to Jerry and Jace from Mum Mum and the Camacho Sablan family. And happy birthday from your wifey and children going out to Dominic Felder. Each and every one of them says they love you. And remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. And please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and birthday. And that'll do it for us here on the news desk. But stay tuned. Jason is up next with Extra. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Explore your world. All right, everybody. Hoffa day. Hello, I'm Jason Salas, and you are watching KUM News Extra on YouTube, on Facebook, and on KUM TV. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, because on the KUM couch, I have a civil servant of Guam, a civil engineer, actually, and a very, very proud Guamanian now dedicating his time, at least in part because he is a man of many talents and very, very busy. Willie Flores working on the Menengan Memorial Foundation. Willie, always a pleasure. Good to see you. Half a day. Hey, half a day. Thanks All for right. having us. Thanks All right. Happy us. liberation to you and your family, first yep. of all. Same to you. Yeah, yeah. thank and, you. Thanks and of course, to everybody. Yeah, yeah, and a major part of liberation now is we as Guamanians, we learn to reflect and we learn to say thank you in situs masi and also remember the sacrifices that were made at Menengen and that is a very big part as I said of what you're working on. Yeah I mean you know Menengen is uh, I, I always say that the, 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 what happened at the end of the world war is the last thing that the Chamorros did as a people. Is the last thing after that everybody kind of went their way and you know but as a as a as a, a monumental occasion that was the last thing we did. Fena, Menengen, Faha, Tinta, all those places um, we were all joined by one particular circumstance, if you want to call it, or one particular event or mm -hmm. a series of events. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's really deep and important in our people's history. Mm -hmm. And it is a part in in our island's heritage and everything that the, the young people have to know. So you know, when when the annual ceremony and you know, like it's it's become such a a big touch point of the liberation festivities. But you know, how do you make sure that that message is passed down to young people just growing up and they and they actually know exactly what went on? Well, we, we try to do a lot of public outreach. Right now, I'm very happy because we have the Manet Lun Mariana's uh, uh, club up at UOG, and they're helping us get the word out, and they're involved with this thing. And I see a, a new generation of people that are going to carry this forward because it doesn't matter who you are on Guam. It doesn't matter where you came from. You were either directly touched, as you and I are, mm -hmm. by what happened at Manyangun, or you, are, you know somebody or you're connected with someone who is directly touched. So it doesn't matter. Every single person on Guam has some connection to Manyangun, whether it be direct or indirect. Realistically, that wasn't that long ago. It's only, what, two generations removed from when, when the, effects, or the events at Manyangun took yeah, place? Yeah, two generations removed. I mean, My grandmother's uh, people. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, uh, folks my age, I mean, I'm, I'm a generation, I'm the generation right after, but folks my age, 
we grew up around hand grenades all over the place and, and bullets all over the place. So the, the memories of the war and the pain of the war in, in our, in our uh, elders, you know, as they talked about it or refused to talk about it, that was so evident for me growing up. And that's kind of what's driving me. Mm -hmm. Now, so. would you consider, again, when, when we're passing these, the lessons and the history down to young people, would you say that that was one of the darker moments in, in Guam history? Or do we actually frame it and say, you know, this is a sacrifice that would, that, are people made so that we can continue to live the lives that we lead now? Or, you know, how do you, how do you actually get that message across? Well, I, you know, I think it's one of the darker moments we were subjected to. But in, in dark moments, we also have, uh, you know, we have uh, stories of courage and stories of enlightenment. And so in that dark moment, the Chamorro people could have surrendered and, and given up and all that, but they held together. And so they created out of that dark moment a very bright and enlightening and hope-filled moment, uh, life for us. And, and so that's the way we, we, we present that. Yeah, these are heroes for the Chamorro people. They sure are. I mean, these are people who were slapped, beaten, refused to, um, refused to uh, tell, you know, refused to reveal where others were, you know, for their protection. I mean, these are our heroes. Mm -hmm. How many people approximately, like, were affected? Um, well, at the time of the war, there were uh, close to, uh, I believe, around 22,000 people mm -hmm. um, affected. And, uh, Which is at, astonishing. It's, it is. It's, it's amazing. And uh, at Manyangan itself, at the concentration camp, we know that there were at least 15,000. We don't have the correct number, but we know that there were at least 15,000 down there. And that's an astonishing number. Can you mm -hmm. imagine 15,000 people being uh, put into this valley, you know, between two rivers? separated by a hill. 15, some of them didn't even know that their family members were on the other side dying or suffering, mm -hmm. but they were all there. Yeah, like some yeah. people say, like say at an event, like a, like a mixed martial arts event that's held up at UOG, and they said, you know, when, that, when the field house is at capacity, that's what, 4,200 people? Yeah. Multiply <laughs> that by three and then add a couple more. Add a couple more. And, and that, that's Meninga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you multiply, you know, you and I, we plan family events. We, we participate in family events. And we know how hard it is to feed people and to make sure people are okay. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine just picking everything up? You're picking your kids, your family, your, the old folks. we got to go. No food, no nothing. Just a clothes mm -hmm. on your back. Let's go because... Uh, you know, we, we, we go or we, or we die, mm. you know. Okay, so. well, the annual uh, ceremony and the memorial is, is always such a moving, touching event, but with this year being the 75th anniversary of liberation and everything, do you guys have anything extra special planned or anything like, yeah, I don't want to say outside of the norm, because, you yeah. know, I mean, it's always, yeah. but you, you do the same events to make sure that we honor the lives that were lost. Yes, we do the same events, but we do have some very special events planned. Of course, uh, uh, we have some very special things to honor the, um, the, the, uh, you know, the, the survivors that are there. We have a special guest speaker uh, who is a war survivor herself. Her, her story will be told because um, she's not able to get up and tell it, but her story will be told by one of her daughters. And I can't release that because it's a surprise. You got to come down. But sure. It, yeah. But, um, Ever the salesman will. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. And then we have, of course, we're, we're building, you know, at the Calaguac and uh, Tizan up in Barragada where a lot of things happened up there when they were building the airfield. We're building a monument there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to unveil that. Uh, down in Hagat, we're uh, building a monument down there. We're going to unveil that in Mangilo. A lot of people don't know the, the uh, you know, a lot of places get uh, thrown about, the names get thrown about about the events, but uh, in, in the different villages. But in Mangilo, a lot of people don't know that this is where thousands of people came through. And the Japanese said, you go to Manyangun, you go to Asinan, you go back down to Pigo, you come here, you're going to die. You know, and it was, it was uh, the significance of Mangilo is that's where our people gathered as a people and then we're, we're told to go to these different places. So we're building a monument in Mangilo uh, to signify that. And then on top of that all, we are building, we are putting a time capsule that will be, uh, will close out the Liberation Day events this year and we will close that time capsule on August 10th. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we've got a lot of uh, great stuff going. We've, we're bringing a lot of, um, I wanna call them souvenirs and mementos of honor for our survivors, which we will be, we'll be providing them. It's, they're not big, but they're small token. And, and you know, there's just no way we can, you know that. Mm -hmm. There's just no way we can repay these folks. And there's just no way we can completely honor them, but we'll try our best. We'll keep plugging. Well, I think, I think continuing to keep their memories alive and continue to, to remember them. Yes. As well yes. as their descendants is, sure. is, you know, probably the very best that we can do. But, sure. But because this is, again, you know, we, we can't underscore this point enough, but because this is the 75th anniversary of liberation, right. there's going to be a lot of people coming from all over the world to come back because they want to celebrate. Yes. They want to reconnect with their roots. And yeah. some people 
may not even realize like how close of a connection they have to the events in Menangan. So yeah. uh, for those people, like, are you trying to actively like reach out and network with them? And, yeah. and how can they get in touch with you if they're watching this right now? If they're watching us, so, you know, I'm not a social media person, but we have a lot of good social media people working with us. Menangan's on Facebook. Contact us through Facebook. Or you can call us uh, right now at the governor's office. The governor's office will know how to get a hold of us. Or you can call us through any of the mayors. The mayors will know how to get a hold of mm -hmm. us. But uh, we're, we're putting out the word on Facebook and on social media, and, and we're putting that blitz out so people can. And we will be putting out announcements uh, as well between now and then where we're starting to put those together. So. Well, Willie, I've always known you as one of the hardest working men on Guam, and certainly th <laughs> this is a very noble pursuit. So thank you from all us Guamanians for what you're doing to keep um, our history alive. Yeah, and Hamzamas KUM for, uh, for keeping the word alive, and, and you too, because a lot of people don't realize what your connections are at Menenga, but they're deep and they're, they're, deep and they're, they're many, yeah. My Nana always made sure we yeah, yeah. She always told us. Well, okay. thank you. She's a smashy, Willie. I'll go smashy. All right. And please stay tuned because we are back right after this. The next generation Galaxy has arrived. See it and believe it. The Infinity O displays the most innovative Galaxy screen yet. Capture the wire world. Take stunning photos with the 123 degree field of vision. Use your phone to charge other wireless charging devices. Don't just stand out.